Okay. So this is case number D19583008 C and the matter of Charles Gray Jr. and Jacqueline Devanya Williamson. Welcome, counsel. Please state your name for the record. Good, good afternoon, Your Honor. Sean Lytle, 11640, on behalf of Charles Gray. Okay. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Crown Price, Farmer 10237, on behalf of Defendant Jacqueline Devanya Williamson. Okay. I have reviewed. Um, the motion, I did not see an opposition was filed, am I correct? There was no opposition filed, Your Honor, and I object to him being able to speak to me. Okay, and yes, because um, the, it, it's, it, you know, it's without filing a, um, an opposition that deems that her, her motion is meritorious. Well, what we did is we, we responded to the discovery request. We okay. responded to the interrogatories on August 14th. Um, Okay, counsel, go ahead and argue it's your motion. <laughs> Just a brief summary of the time in sure. this case. We filed the motion on August 1st, and there's no opposition filed. Right. Our discovery requests were originally served on April 9th to May 13th. No response, no issues. Reached out to opposing counsel. There was some issues with opposing counsel switching right in the middle of there. So make sure he had the responses. Right. Um, granted him an extension of time. Granted him another extension of time. Eventually, he said, you know, I'll speak to you by July 8th. Absolutely no promise. This is the last extension I've ever request at all. Um, and July 8th came and left without any responses. We also have the outstanding order way back when, months ago, for his VA records to be produced because there are some issues with mental and physical health concerns that the court had. Those records, although we've been repeatedly advised that they were requested and they were on the way and in order, they have never been produced to my office. We also have never seen a single 16.5 um, production. Those were due pursuant to the case management order on 525. So all these deadlines have been extended, extended, extended. Right. We even continued the entire evidentiary during this matter to get this request for discovery, bumped it back a couple months so we could have the evidence that we needed, mm -hmm. and it still has not been produced. We did receive on, um, in August, incomplete and very deficient discovery responses to the interrogatories. Um, objections were made to every single interrogatory post. A lot of the questions weren't answered at all on the basis of objections. It's my understanding that all objections are waived due to the failure to timely assert them, and so the objections would be overruled. On my way to court right now at 12.35, I just received his responses to the request for production of documents. Mm -hmm. Every single request made was responded to with this objection. The above captioned case is a custody action in which the parties are never married. This request for production is not likely to lead to the discovery of relevant admissible evidence. This was a response I received in response to questions about dad's mental and physical health condition, to questions about any and all evidence he had regarding the historical timeshare of the child, to any and all evidence regarding the best interest of the child and why he was asking for primary or joint physical custody in this case. There's no question that a significant amount of these were directly on point to the issues before the court, as acknowledged by the court that they wanted to see the VA records as well. I do not think that that is a good faith response. Not one document was produced. Surely something in there. <laughs> they could have agreed, well, oh, maybe that's relevant. But no, they were blank blanket, boilerplate responses, refused to produce everything. My initial motion to compel, which was filed, you know, late in time in the litigation, but because of the multiple extensions and because of the multiple promises that these would be produced, I requested that they have until September 1st to amend their responses and give us evidence to respond. Based upon the responses I've now received, when they make it clear that they're not participating in good faith, they're going to make these objections, and none of this information is relevant, I'd ask the court today to stick them to those responses. Mm -hmm. Pursuant to NRCP 37, they should not be permitted to provide the court with any of that evidence that they didn't produce as of this date before. Pursuant to NRS 47250, would ask that a negative inference be raised, disputable, they can dispute it at trial, saying that any and evidence that they willfully, willfully did not produce should be deemed adverse to that party. We requested $750 in attorney's fees. I believe that's fair and reasonable. I included the Brunzel statement and a copy of my invoice validating those fees for today. And short and long, they made their bad judge. I would ask that they be forced to lay in it and that they be precluded from admitting testimonial, documentary, any evidence that they are refusing to produce because they don't believe it's relevant. How come you didn't produce the, you had a, I saw the email, July 8th was your deadline. Yeah. How come you didn't produce documents? So shortly after there? I sent that email, my right. So shortly after I sent that email, my my client reported to me that he was heading to California because his father had taken ill. He sent me a text message that he had sent to 
um, to Ms. Williamson as well, indicating that his father had taken ill. Um, he was back and forth between California and here for the last couple of months, and his father actually passed away uh, two weeks ago in hospice out there. Um, and so he, his whole life just sort of got derailed by that. Um, in terms of, you know, in terms of why we didn't meet that deadline, I, I frankly just didn't have the information that I needed to respond. On the interrogatories in the background, while all of this was going on, there was also an active CPS investigation going on into mom and mom's boyfriend, um, which ended up with uh, charges being substantiated against mom's boyfriend, and we were dealing with that, right? No, I, I, I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. introducing that as evidence of wrongdoing by anybody. I'm saying that, that that was, for the time that my client was in town, he was, he was dealing with trying to keep his job and mm -hmm. also to deal with CPS on, on that issue. So in terms of the substance of the requests themselves, mm -hmm. <coughs> if you look at the 24 requests for production that were served, all but two of them are about financial information and his gambling habits. And, and I, I stand by my objection, but that, that is not... Problem is... His, you, his finances, this is not a divorce case. Okay, your objections are waived. I'm going to order that they are deemed waived because you... She gave you plenty. I mean, she propounded the discovery on April 9th. So, request for production of documents and interrogatories. Correct. I was not she in the case at that time. I know, but she gave so, you until July 8th. That, yeah. that, to me, was your deadline. And from that point forward, objections are waived. So, I'm going to give you one week okay. to respond okay. and without objection because they were deemed waived because you're just turning this stuff over now. So, go ahead and supplement with that. When was your discovery closed? Because I know you guys have calendar call 919 and 923. So I'm not going to reopen discovery no. except as to the information that you want, or I will just, or he, I can make it so that he cannot bring up any of those documents. However, you want it, counsel, because it is late and you did give extensions. Um, what would you prefer? I prefer that he be strictly held in testimony and admissible evidence, the documents he produces by the court's deadline of one week. Okay, well, so if he okay. responds to you a question saying this isn't relevant, I don't want him talking about historical timeshare issues on this behalf. Okay, that's, then, then that's what uh, you, you draft the report and recommendation is going to be in that manner. Um, the only thing I, I will say, um, I'll grant $750 as sanctions because I feel that that's reasonable because normally I give $500 per request for production of documents in interrogatories. <laughs> Um, but attorney's fees, you have to you have to make the phone call, so that's very important. I don't see, and you have to put in your affidavit that you've made the phone call. But that being said, I'm going to award it as sanctions first because I think $750 is a reasonable amount that you're requesting. And she did work with you until July. I understand it was previous counsel and whatnot. No, absolutely. But right. she did till till July 8th. So I'm going to give one week till close of business, 5 p.m. next Wednesday to supplement because your objections are deep deemed waived um, and then um, otherwise you're not going to be able to introduce any of those documents 37c1 says that you cannot introduce uh, anything um, to refute um, whatever she has if you've not produced any of those documents or answered those interrogatories um, I'm going to grant the $750 in sanctions so I'll have uh, you can uh, counsel draft the report and recommendation um, even though it's it's going to be two weeks out September 20th. Okay. At 2 p.m. Okay. At, um, no, 1 30. It changed. September 20th. Oh, yeah, because now we're on Fridays. Yes. Okay, September 20th at 1 30. Um, if you get it in the, well, now it's on Fridays. So I was going to say the one day before. So if you get in the report and recommendation, pass it by counsel. Yeah. Give him at least a week to, to review it. If he doesn't sign off, then you can turn it in without his signature. And, um, if you turn it in by the Wednesday before the 20th, we'll vacate it. It's only a status check for the report and recommendation. And then uh, you guys go to trial on 923. So anything else I can address? Uh, the negative inference under NRS 47 for documents not produced. If I will allow the negative inferences if he does, if he objects. So don't object and answer all those type of things. And so I will allow it if, if there's any objections. If you feel there's an objection to be made, I think they're I think they're waived, and I'll allow the negative inference. And then well, the, at trial, they can rule on credibility and issues and um, up I'm more concerned about the documents. Okay. If he continues to refuse to provide his medical documents. Okay. I'd like the inference that he would have produced them if they would have helped him out. 
and that's fine. And, and I, I think that's reasonable, and especially because council's been working since April 9th and April, May, June, July, oh, yeah. August, September. We're yep. talking five months, yep. and you guys are and having to have that continued. And you're in Department G, so when you're on the eve of the, the, the 923 trial. So, um, okay, well, good luck. Thank you, council. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.